This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on March the 14th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, good afternoon everybody. It's uh, one o'clock and time we started again. Now last week I told you that uh, I was going to bring in a Linux uh, computer and we would look at it and see if it's something that you might like to do for your old computers. Uh, any Windows XP boxes you might have can be upgraded uh, to Linux if they won't run Windows 7 and most of the old XP boxes won't. They just don't have enough horsepower. <clears throat> but Linux is really good uh, about running on old machines because they don't take a lot of resources, like a lot of memory, a lot of hard drive space, a lot of CPU cycles. It's, it, it's really um, um, low energy that way. You can do a lot of things with it, mainly because what you see here as the desktop is um, it's not as um, CPU intensive as a Windows box. In other words, it doesn't take a lot of CPU to make this desktop go. Right there, the CPU is only running at about uh, between 10 and 20 percent just to make the desktop run. Okay, and that's good. That's good. You can even cut that down even more by using uh, another desktop called ICE, which is even less CPU intensive. Okay. Um, now the great thing about Linux as it is as it exists now is that it's very Windows-like. You don't the the learning curve on it is not very steep at all, and so to be able to um, use Linux almost right out of the box, as it were, if you, uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, right out of the box, as it were, um, and find your way around in it, really easy. Um, it, has a, it has a menu button right here, and so if you, um, if you click on that menu button, you're going to um, get a menu that's very Windows-like. Uh, it has the shutdown options as Windows does. Uh, you can, it, it has um, categories um, wherein the different kinds of applications lie. So uh, on internet, for instance, if I hover over that, you'll see all of the things that I can do on the internet that uh, essentially, well, maybe not comes with Linux, but you can activate in Linux. So I've got Google Chrome here as a web browser. I've also got Firefox here as a web browser. There's two or three others that are specific for Linux. Um, they are very fast, very secure. Um, you can, uh, in, in, the, um, in the mail uh, application, there's a mail application in here. Uh, where did I put it? Email right there. Um, there's all kinds of things on the, in the internet um, um, entry. In the personal entry, um, there's all kinds of things, ways that you can um, customize Linux to the way you might want it. The look and feel. Um, and all of these are in here. Now, by the way, you can go in here not knowing too much about what you're doing and not mess it up too badly. And if you do do something that you don't like, you can get out of it right away just by unchecking the box you checked. Okay? Um, there's, um, in, uh, there's document handling programs. Um, I put in um, a, a PDF viewer, a PDF converter that converts any document to PDF. Um, 
let's see what else did I put in here I, I put in LibreOffice so it will run LibreOffice as a, and you can manipulate any Windows document that you might get uh, very cool that way um, there are uh, text editors all kinds of things uh, to help you along with editing documents making new documents and by the way controlling your computer okay because you do control your computer sometimes with uh, with a text editor but uh, maybe if I get some time I'll show you that later that's that's sort of a, a little more advanced the the graphics entries um, there are all kinds of things here to help you do graphics when I say do graphics I mean manipulate pictures okay to help you manipulate pictures even make graphics of your own say you wanted to make a little tiny logo and you had time to fiddle around with your mouse to do it you can make it in these graphics packages just like paint you can do that kind of work in paint you can do that kind of work here in these graphics packages um, there's a screen capture mode here where if you get something on the screen and you want to capture it for a little logo or, or a, a photograph or something like that you can capture it right off the screen and put it in a folder easy um, the next thing is the file system now the file system for Linux is rather different than it is for Windows in that a Linux computer doesn't trust you as far as it can throw a pickup truck okay it doesn't know who you are and it's not going to do as you say right away as a matter of fact it set up properly uh, a Linux system will lock you out of the Linux system you have no business being in there as far as the Linux system is concerned you want to make changes you have to prove who you are not just some phantom from the internet you got to prove it and so the file system doesn't trust you but you have your own file system on the computer for your own documents your own uh, for your your desktop for your desktop uh, a documents folder um, a mail folder and all kinds of things you have in there let's uh, let's click on file and this is your home folder come on there we go and your home folder is um, has uh, an applications folder your documents can go in there what's on your desktop things that download for you you make downloads they're there this is in fact your user folder okay now I can go up one and I can show you what the Linux folder is all about and this is uh, the, li the Linux um, the Linux folders that run the computer okay now I've set mine because I know what I'm doing I've set them so I can go in there and do stuff but if I ever loaded one for you I would set it so you can't go in there and do stuff you have no you have no business in there <laughs> once it's set you have no business in there the root folder okay now if you open up um, my PC and you click on C the C drive what the list you get there of all of the stuff that's on C drive is called the root folder okay in Linux we just simply call it you've got root and that simply means that you're at the very basic level of what the computer is able to show you and what it's able to do um, in this version of Linux and there are hundreds of them in this version um, you're given sort of a, a pseudo root folder it's not the real root folder it's sort of an approximation of what it might be uh, but in in a in another version of Linux uh, you you can um, get root access and that means you can go into this folder and you can make changes in there to um, make the computer do exactly as you as you please if you wanted to run a web server from your home or a mail server 
from your home, you can do it in Linux. And if you have the proper permissions, you can put all kinds of different programs in the root folder, which will allow you to do that. In other words, uh, you can tell your friends, uh, my web page is on my server at my house. Here's the address. You can go there if you like. Okay? You can do that in Linux and do it relatively safely. Relatively safely. Um, the MNT folder is, is uh, the mount folder. Now, in MNT, in mount, um, we'll notice that we have a few things here. We have a CD-ROM. Yes, we have a CD-ROM on the computer. We have um, a DVD drive. Uh, I can plug a flash drive into it. Um, the SDA1 is uh, the hard drive of the computer. Okay, and all of these drives can be mounted and unmounted as you please. Okay, so if you want to make a, 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 a change to your computer um, and the drive is not mounted, it, it doesn't have a little check mark next to it, you can mount it. The home folder is mounted. You see it has a little green check box. Okay, yes? Does that mean you use your old floppies? It says floppy. If you have a floppy drive, yeah, you can put it in. If you have a floppy drive on your I computer. Yeah. Disks. Yeah. Um, zip drives and all the rest of it are available um, to be, um, if you have the proper drive, it can be mounted and make it usable. If it's not mounted, you can't get at it. You can't see what's on it. Windows does that automatically without you asking it. Just when you plug a drive in, uh, a thumb drive or something, it just mounts it. Okay, so you can get onto it and see what's there. But not in Linux. Linux doesn't trust you. Okay, you, you put a thumb drive on a Linux box and it's going to say to you essentially, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> if you want to do this, you've got to prove who you are. Um, sometimes it will ask you for a password, okay, if you want to mount, mount the drive and, and, the, and the Linux doesn't trust you, it will say, okay, I'll mount the drive, just tell me what the password is, okay. You've proved to the computer who you are. If, uh, if that command came from the internet, and it can mount a drive, came from the internet, uh, well, a computer would pop up and say, well, well, okay, you want to mount a drive? What's the password? Now, if you didn't do that, if you didn't tell the computer mount a drive, and all of a sudden a password for mount drive com comes up, well, you know that somebody's trying to fiddle with you. Okay? So you just say no, and it goes away. Easy enough. Um, now, that that is pretty much... Um, how you can get around in the folders on your computer. Um, you may want to, um, depending on the version of Linux that you have, you may want to load more programs onto the computer. Well, there is a way to do that too. Now, there's a really geeky way of doing it all in command line, in doing it from a text box and you, you just use plain text, that's the really geeky way, and you have to know what you're doing. But more modern um, iterations of Linux do away with that. They give you a way to install items from the internet, from where you got this Linux application, and they give you a way um, to to load programs onto the computer. Come on. Oops. What page am I available? Oh, I know why. Because I don't have it networked. All right, that's fine. But it does give you um, ways to install programs from your Linux distribution onto your computer. Now, when I say the words Linux distribution, what I'm talking about is all the different flavors. They're is in this case Linux Puppy. This is Linux Puppy. Um, there's Linux from Conical. There's Red Hat Linux. 
You've heard, that's a very old, you've heard of that one. Uh, the guy that owns the Tiger Cats owns Red Hat Linux, okay? Um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of distributions of Linux that run in a, uh, that can run on old iron like this or can run really, really robust programs on brand new computers, um, much like this one. This one's only about a year old. And it can do everything on this computer as fast as or faster than Windows itself. Um, so there you are, a look at um, Linux itself. Um, and as I said, if you have an old computer that has, oh, probably a gig of memory, at least um, uh, uh, an 80 gig hard drive, maybe, maybe even a 40, okay, as opposed to something new with one terabyte, um, but, you know, an old hard drive. Um, Linux depending on the distribution that you choose, will run just fine. And it's relatively easy to use because it's in this Windows-like format. Okay. As I said, you can do other things with it. Um, this right here is called the console. I'll just open it up for you. And it starts off by saying, my name is sh-4.1 number sign. That's the name of this computer. Okay. And we can do things. Once it gives you that name, you can, uh, you can connect to internet resources uh, with, just, uh, with just text. Okay. Um, I can't do anything right now because it's not connected to the internet, but you can do that. You, you can uh, dig down inside of, uh, of your file system. Uh, moving files around in text mode in Linux is really, really easy. And I'll tell you why. Because once we say um, change, change directory desktop, Okay, CD, desktop. The computer, um, this box will start looking at the desktop directory. And let's say that there's a program on there um, called PDF EDIT. All you have to do is just start typing PDF and it will end. Um, Click, uh, click the tab button, it'll bring up everything in that folder that's called PDFE. If you have 10 things, it'll show you 10 things, and then you type the next one until you get to where, if, if you have a 20-character file name, eventually it'll get down to the one you want, and you just hit enter, and you can do with it as you please. You can move it, you can copy it, you can delete it, whatever you please. And it's all done through text once you get used to using it, okay? But in your case, folk, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> so um, just simply doing um, just simply doing as you would in Windows to move stuff around is the way you're going to work it. Um, So there you go. I think uh, I've told you everything that I need to tell you about Linux. Um, questions? Yes. Where do you download it from? Um, Where did it come from? Different distributions of Linux can come from different places. Now, in the case of uh, Puppy Linux, um, it comes from the Puppy Linux website. And the latest distributions are there. If you want to do what's called Debian, there are many, many flavors of Debian. You can go to the Debian website and download it from there. In this case, in, in Puppy's case, you can download and burn 
a CD. And you, what you burn is you burn the entire Puppy Linux program onto the CD. And you make it what's called a live CD. So if you have Windows on your computer and you want to play with Linux, you want to know more about it, you want to understand it, you can put that live CD into your, into your uh, CD bay, restart the computer, have it start from the CD bay, and it will load this. And it won't touch your Windows installation at all. As far as it's concerned, you don't have any other installation but what's on the CD. Okay, It's called a live CD install. And that's how I did this, by the way. I installed this from a live CD. So um, you can do, um, there's five or six flavors of Linux on live CDs. Uh, the most famous is called Canopix, K-N-O-P-P-I-X, Canopix. And uh, I used that quite a while ago to help me with... Uh, uh, with network problems that I could investigate networks really, really deep, deeply in Linux. Um, there are others that have live CDs that you can download and you can uh, have your computer run them. And so it's, it's doing everything from the CD player. It's not doing anything from the hard drive. Not doing anything from the hard drive. The other thing that you can do with Linux is you can do what's called a dual boot. You can leave your old version of Windows XP on your computer. Just leave it there. And you can, during the installation of something like Puppy Linux, you can tell it, well, I want to leave my old version of Windows on the computer. Just give me a way when the computer boots up to say, okay, uh, you have Windows and you have Linux, which one do you want to boot into? And it will give you a list and you choose from the list which one you want, Windows XP or Linux. But you already had your feed in your CD to have it there. Well, uh, this, this is if you make a full install, okay? If you make a full install, but, but uh, um, Running Linux from a CD from your CD player, uh, you're not you're not doing that. You're just telling the computer um, there's a CD in there. Um, just run whatever you find on that CD, okay? And it will run the Linux from there. So, if when you've done all that, put that in, play with Linux, and then take the disk out, everything you've done is private, but it's still on that CD. Um. No, uh, the, the, the CD itself, you can't write any more information to it. What you can do is you can put a little hidden piece on your, on your hard drive, on the computer itself, to say, if, if I want to run Linux again, if I want to run Puppy Linux again, save all of these little changes that I made, like, like uh, do downloading and installing, um, uh, Firefox, okay, save all of that stuff to this little hidden piece of my hard drive. The next time I put in the Linux CD, it will look for stuff on the hard drive in that little hidden piece. And so instead of having to reconfigure Firefox to work, it will just work because it's got that little hidden piece in there that says, oh, this is how you do it, okay? Yes, exactly. So uh, years ago, I had I had a number of clients that were small businesses, and I had them do that with live CDs. Rather than use Windows XP to log into their bank, I would say here, boot the computer up with this live CD. Now you've got to. It's going to be a little slower. You've got to do a couple of things before you can go to your bank. But once you've done those things, you go to your bank. And there is no way that your computer can be hacked while you're doing it. While you're doing it. Okay? There's no way to hack this it, when it's in live CD mode if you're on the internet. It can't happen. 
So if you want to go and look at your Gmail, you can do that from a web browser and it will be perfectly fine. Or you want to go and, and do your banking or buy stuff, it's perfectly fine because this computer when it's running on a live CD cannot be hacked. End of story. Uh, yeah, if you're using Win if you're using Windows to do that, you're not running the live CD. The, so oh, the live CD is not running. It's only when the live CD is running. You can keep your your XP on there and just tell the computer run from the CD. How do you tell the computer just in the main? Well, uh, in um, in the setup of the computer, um, deep down inside it, there's a way to tell the computer. Okay, look at the CD drive first. If there's a CD in there, run it. Okay? If, not, if there's no CD, go to the hard drive. And that's called the boot orc. So it's, you tell the computer, look at the CD first. If there's, um, if there's a program there, run the program. If not, just go to the hard drive and run from there. Okay, yes? Uh, just a general question. I don't really understand all this. Would I use Linux mainly to save CPU space on my? Um, no, not really. Um, it, it is uh, really it is quite small compared to Windows, as as uh, as the size of the operating system. It's really quite small. As a matter of fact, there are versions of Linux out there um, that have a very lightweight um, desktop that are probably on the order of. 125 megabytes, okay. A Windows installation now is four and a half gigs, okay. It's quite a difference. It's quite a difference. So um, that's that's a. a a good look at Linux, Puppy Linux. Um, wouldn't we want it particularly? I'm sorry. Why wouldn't we? Want if you have, if you have an old Windows box with Windows XP, it might be the better idea. If if you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on a new one, um, to have that Windows box done over in Linux. And the, the operating system then would be uh, very safe to use. Windows XP has, has got so many holes in it. It can be exploited uh, just about every time you, you go onto the internet. Okay, There's an exploit out there. For every website you go to or every email you go to, okay, there's an exploit there waiting to happen in Windows XP. Not so in Linux. Okay, Your computer becomes safe to use again. Now, if you want to do things like use more modern websites, like your bank is a more modern website, they, they keep their stuff up to date so that um, they are taking care of all of the possible exploits that could happen to their web servers. Okay? And to do that, they insist that you have up-to-date web browsers. Well, that's what Linux gives you, is an up-to-date web browser, particularly Firefox. Particularly Firefox. Okay? So everything you can do in a modern web browser, you can do in Firefox in its, uh, in its uh, modern equivalent here in Linux. So what you're saying, then, if I download Puppy Linux, use Firefox, I can open a make a new bank account on that? If it's, lo if it's loaded on, um, if you're just using it as, as a CD, everything. yeah, if you're just using it as a CD, no, you ha when you, every time you go to the bank you have to uh, re-enter your, your authentication, okay, yeah. your passwords, uh, your account numbers and all of that. If you've loaded Linux on your computer as an operating system, well, it's going to save all that stuff for you and do it in a safe manner where other people won't be able to get at it. How's, That's, how's Linux making money? 
Um, folks like Red Hat and Conical, yeah. they are into big business. Okay, so their business is servicing big business. Fully, I would say 80% of all of the web servers and web services on the internet today are being run on a Linux type operating system. Okay, 80% of them. People that are still using Windows, uh, the only reason that they are using Windows is that if something goes wrong, they have someone to sue. <laughs> That's the reason. I had, one day I had a very high ranking business type um, um, industrial technician tell me, that's why we use Windows. We could do Linux, we could train up our people, it would take about a year, and we could get support from Conical or Red Hat or anybody else, but if something goes wrong, who do we sue? If we use Linux, we can only sue ourselves. We've only got ourselves to blame. But if there's something wrong with Windows and something happens and we can prove it, we'll sue them to hell. So that's, that's really why it's done that way. Um, how Linux makes its money uh, is really in the services end of it. Okay? Any other questions? So if I wanted to install Linux, I here's, you're available. <laughs> here's the thing. If you want to have Linux installed on a computer, you'd have to give me a couple of days. I would go slowly with it, make sure that you don't lose much of your stuff. I could put it on your old computer and you'd be okay. Could you do it yourself? No. No. You won't see them on Monday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's uh, and that's not the reason why I'm telling you this. I'm I'm telling you this because if you have this old iron and you and you don't want to spend five or six hundred dollars on a new computer, this is a this is an option for you. It's an Does option. That change all of the procedures. Like no, becomes... no, uh, because like I said, uh, this w desktop is very Windows-like. Okay. They're the menu, okay? Well, what's down there on your Windows box? You push that button, you get a menu, okay? You go to the, you go to the, uh, uh, to the entries on the menu, okay? Um, one of the entries on your, on your XP menu is uh, documents, okay? So you click on documents and all your documents are there. Email, okay? Email, your email's there. The thing, the the uh, utilities and file systems to help you do stuff. No, I they're all there. Hotmail. I mean, if I use Hotmail, can I continue using? Oh yeah, yeah. No, you would just, you no, would just. That doesn't change. No, no. You just log into a Firefox web browser, into your Hotmail account, and there, there you are. I don't go through Firefox now, though. No, you don't. Okay. Well, yes, it can be done. We we you have an email, oh, uh, you have an email uh, browser here which can be set up for Hotmail, okay? Um, if you're using Windows XP and you're using um, um, Outlook Express, that's what you're using for your mail? I think so. Yeah, um, really, um, Microsoft doesn't like that very much. <laughs> um, and it's becoming more and more difficult to use the features of Hotmail in Microsoft Outlook. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those things, uh, you might even be better off just to go to, like save, save out all of your, your, um, your contacts and start using uh, Outlook in Firefox. You go into Outlook.com and log in there. Well, how do you access the outset? I've never used Firefox, so I just go in Google Chrome and then... Yeah, well, it's, you, Firefox can be set up to look exactly like Google Chrome. 
When it opens up, it'll op open a Google page. Uh, are you avoiding Google Chrome then? Perfectly? No, the, the, re the reason that I, I have Google Chrome on here, but um, it does not, Google Chrome does not update as well as Firefox does. Firefox updates to the latest version in this iteration of Linux. Google Chrome is about a year behind. Okay, but like I said, it's, there, there's, what's the problem? You can just tell Firefox to open in Google. Okay, open a Google page. That's what I do. Yeah, or you can tell it to, uh, to open, uh, or you can put a link in there, just click the button, you're in Outlook.com. You're on your Hotmail page. Okay, yes? What you were just saying about Outlook and Hotmail, is that why when I go to my Hotmail account now, and I go through Outlook, Every once in a while, we can't find this page, hmm, is what it says, or it freezes. I yeah. look at three or four emails, and then it just freezes. Well, that, that, that's probably got something to do with uh, um, the operating system on your computer. It's, it's not operating the way it should do um, if, if pages are freezing and such, um, but uh, when you're when your web browser says, hmm, I can't find this page, um, it, it, like if you've clicked on an email and it tries to open another page and says, I can't find it, um, there may be some damage to the email itself or it's just another iteration of, of uh, crappy old Windows. <laughs> windows 10 can be crappy old Windows. Okay, it can be. All right, um, I've gone 40 minutes here, and so I'm going to finish up with this, and I want to run something else for you um, for this. Okay, so we'll get rid of that, and we'll go over to the other computer over here. Now, a while ago... Um, I talked about Apple and the feds, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. <laughs> Last night, I found a video that explains it a hundred times better than I can. And this guy is, is extremely lucid with his explanation of Apple and the feds. Um, how many of you know John Oliver? You know about John Oliver? Oliver. John Oliver. He, he was on The Daily Show for ages and ages and ages. And after the, uh, he left The Daily Show after a while. But he was one of their, like, pseudo reporters. Okay. Now he is. Now he's said with it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, but he has his own gig now. Okay. And... He has given an explanation of, of uh, Apple and the Feds that is extremely lucid. You'll enjoy it. It's about 20 minutes. Okay, so we'll just we'll run that now. Hopefully, I can get this to give you some nice sound. <laughs> can I have a copy? <laughs> Um, I, there is a link to it on, on YouTube. I will put that link in my email this week uh, so you can, uh, you can have a link to it. <laughs> All right, that's it, folk, for the day. Thank you so much, and I'll get this off to you as quickly as I can. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.